It's Room 104 with Kev and Trish. Welcome back. We've got self-professed plastic surgery addict Serena Smith on the line. Hi, Serena, and welcome to the show. Hello. Hey, Serena. Hi, Kevin. Now, Serena, your journey has been quite the dramatic one. You've spent over 50K on plastic surgery at only 23 years old. First, take us back to the start of your plastic surgery journey. Um, how did it start? How old were you when you had your first surgery and what did it entail? Well, first of all, I would just like to say that I think plastic surgery is fabulous. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's amazing and I love it. Um, so my first procedure would have been my breasts. Uh, but it all started a long time ago when I was super young. I think the kind of attraction to it I found it through TV shows. At the time, there was a lot of TV shows about plastic surgery, you know, reality shows. There was a reality competition, plastic surgery show. You know, it was, it became really popular in pop culture when I was a kid. And then I got so obsessed with it. I was like, this is so cool. You know, you can change yourself and become a different person. You can look however you want. So when I was 18, I did my boob job, my first one. I have my second one coming up soon. <laughs> okay. okay, well, uh, so uh, tell us about your boobs, if you will. Um, what do you? What's what was the first surgery, and then what's the what's the one that's coming up? Well, they're pretty fabulous. So okay. usually, <laughs> usually <laughs> how it works with, you know, enhancements or something, you can't always get exactly what you want right away. Sometimes it's a process. So mm -hmm. you can only go so big at one time. So it's been a few years since I've had these and they're starting to feel a little bit too small. So I'm going about double the size. Uh, it's wow. going to be, it's going to be pretty big, but I don't know. I think about it this way that I'm in my 20s now. So if I want to do it, I need to do it now because when I get a little bit older, I'm probably going to want to take it out, maybe go a little bit smaller. So now is the time to have fun with it, you know? And okay. what's the size now? <laughs> um, For... I'm about a double D cup size. Okay, double D doesn't sound too bad. And you want to go That's pretty up. big. So, um, how implants work it goes by the size the cc so i have 500 cc and i'm going to be going up to 1000 so it's basically double the size so 1000 on each side it's like a liter on each side <laughs> you're gonna have two liters on you at all times that's uh, that's quite yes. a lot that's amazing so my plan is to do, to do that in the summer. Um, right. And in three weeks, I'm actually doing a BBL surgery, which is liposuction. And then they transfer the fat to your hips and your butt. And the reason why I'm doing that, I mean, of course, anybody wants a curvier figure, but I realize that I'm going to look crazy if I have these huge boobs and not a, a huge butt. <laughs> I need to proportionalize. So, and I was talking to a friend of mine and I asked his opinion and he said, this was a guy. So I like to ask guys opinions because usually mm. they're pretty honest. <laughs> yeah. And he said, uh, is the top going to match the bottom if you do your boobs that big? And I'm like, shit, you know what? I don't think it's going to. Okay. So three weeks from now, I am doing a BBL surgery. <laughs> Oh my gosh, Serena, um, the pain that goes along with it and the recovery time and all that, it, surgery is a big deal for most, especially going under general anesthesia and knowing what's uh -huh. to come afterwards. But what was your thought? Does it scare you at all? I suppose after doing so many, you probably get used to it. But, you know, for well, your first one, how was that going under the knife and knowing this could be life and death? You know, you do have to sign away your life when you go, when you go under general anesthesia. I mean... With anything, there's a risk, but of course you have to do your research and make sure you choose, you know, the best possible doctors and you put yourself in the safest hands. You know, you don't want to take any risks. You don't want to try and cut corners and get a cheaper price or anything. But mm -hmm. I will say it is a little bit scary. I mean, I would be lying if I said I didn't get anxious or nervous before, because of course, you know, you never know how it's going to turn out, but that's why you take your time, you do your research and you find the right person for you. Pain-wise, 
I do have a high pain tolerancy and pain medication definitely helps, but yeah, it does hurt, but you heal and you get over it. Um, you know, I remember when I got my nose job, it didn't really hurt, but it was just funny. What I said was that I feel like someone smacked me in the face with a shovel and I just woke up. <laughs> <laughs> that is <laughs> that's how it felt. That sounds I, I, rough. I've been hit in uh -huh. the nose in the past, and it is probably one of the most painful places to be hurt or injured. So I can imagine, you know, you purposely going under the knife and then having to just heal through that. Oof. Um, but listen, really a week, a week later, you don't even remember. You don't even remember how it felt. All oh, you're just excited about how hot you look. <laughs> <laughs> Um, tell us uh, tell us about uh, what's your number how many surgeries and procedures have you had so far and and how long do you have to stay in the medical center after you've had one done um so usually you're only there for about an hour they just okay. make sure make sure you're awake and you're good to go and then they ship you off and then right. you lay you lay in your bed for a week or two and you come out looking fabulous <laughs> and what's your overall number then what's your number um, so surgery wise, I've had a few um, operations procedures. Uh, it's really hard to tell because I've done quite a few. There's okay. a lot of, you know, beauty procedures. They have laser treatments, thread lifts, fillers, Botox. I've done it all. <laughs> <laughs> it sounds like it. it sounds like yeah. it. Is Why there, not? <laughs> is there anything um, now that you uh, regret or that, um, you think, okay, maybe, well, I suppose you're getting the BBL done, so you are getting a few tweaks and extras. Uh -huh. um, but is there anything so far that you look back and think, oh, maybe I could have, you know, done a little bit differently there? Um, the one thing I would say I regret is not getting my boobs big enough and not getting my nose small enough. <laughs> not getting your nose small enough? Really? I want more. <laughs> That's you all want, I regret. You want it to be smaller? Yeah, who doesn't? <laughs> I think it looks great. I think it looks great as you as you have it now, but okay, like well, thank you, handsome. Yeah. I'm glad you like it. <laughs> of course. <laughs> um tell me, uh Serena, any like what's the the overall reaction been like from people? Are they kind to you? Are they not so kind? Is there a backlash? Tell us what people say to you. I mean, you get different reactions in different spaces. So online, you know, people love to say whatever they think. And the thing that sucks about is online is that people don't really know who you truly are. You know, they see one thing of you or they watch, you know, a video of you or something, and then they just pick apart every little thing and they don't really see you as a whole person. It mm. really sucks. And I don't want to bother me because... I know exactly who I am and the people around me know who I am. So what someone thinks I am or says about me, you know, it doesn't matter. Why <laughs> do opinion, you... The opinion of other people doesn't really mean much to me. Hmm. Of course, if they're positive and they're loving and supportive, then I'm very thankful for that. You know, people hmm. can also be super sweet and super genuine. People there's a lot of people out there who just like to see other people enjoying themselves and doing what makes them happy. But why do you think there is that cohort of people who are so quick to judge, quick to be negative and um, so quick to put it all down in writing and, and, and comment? Like, what is that uh, about people? Well, I think there's a couple of reasons. Um, some people just don't know what they don't understand. They might mm. just be confused by it and they don't understand it. So they don't like it. Some people, you know, I don't want to say that people are jealous, but I don't know. They might see maybe not jealous of the surgery because everybody likes what they like, but some people just see someone who is confident and happy with themselves. And that's what they don't like. They don't like seeing people who are confident and they, they want to tear them down, mm. you know? And are there people know. who are, are, are there people who are like concerned for you saying, oh, I think you're um, doing too much or too soon or it's too fast? Are there people who are also like uh, voicing their concern? Yeah, I get comments like that, but it's from people who don't know me and people who 
who don't know what's going on mm. you know they say oh you're doing too much you you have you know they say oh you have too much of this or oh you shouldn't have got that done and they're they're mentioning something that i don't even have done you know right they don't even know what they're talking about they just want to be negative just for the purpose of it as a woman serena do you think um, uh-huh. there's more pressure to keep up with the beauty standards that are out there or is this something that you personally you see you have insecurities yourself and you just want to fix or do you think it's the beauty standards that are sometimes laden upon women through the press through the media through tv shows movies do you think that's what's influenced you more so than you actually wanting to make these changes yourself i mean i don't really say it's the main reason Reason, but of course it's an influence I mean it's kind of just a known fact that if you look better people are going to treat you better it's all about how you present yourself and it's an unfortunate thing in the world you know I don't really base my friendships or base any relationships on how someone looks you know I have friends who don't like makeup they don't like to be glamorous they're just simple and It's kind of unfortunate that the world does work that way, but that's just how it is. And especially when we're brought up, you know, seeing everything in the media, you know, like I did say, I grew up seeing all of this kind of plastic surgery and things on TV shows, but I didn't feel shamed into having to need it. I just felt like it was amazing and it was awesome and so cool that you could do that and that people do have the opportunity to do that. But I've never felt pressured. Mm. Have you ever thought about the future and how you'll look? So down the line, maybe in your 40s or 50s, or do you think, oh, I'll just constantly keep maintaining it? And when we speak of maintenance, how how often do you have to get touch-ups and, you know, corrections? And Well, when I think of myself at 40, I picture myself walking downtown with a long floor-length fox fur coat, something fat. I'm going to be wearing some, maybe some leather gloves or something, just looking like a fabulous woman. I'll probably, I'll probably have a facelift, (laughs) but I, I don't think you need much maintenance. You know, you do the things that you want to do and you get the look that you have. And then really the only maintenance that you're doing, if you want to, would be anti-aging, you know, once you get to 40. Okay. So yeah. (laughs) <laughs> Serena, I gotta ask you, right? You say uh-huh. you spent over 50k to fund this so far. I uh-huh. mean, that's a lot of coin. I mean, is it? Is it yeah. a lot? <laughs> for me, it is. Is it not for you? For most 23 year olds, I know as well, Serena. <laughs> yeah. A 23, I didn't have 500 quid, let alone 50k. I don't believe in money. I don't think it's real. Mm. Money is just a made up thing that doesn't even exist. Right. <laughs> it's still numbers on a screen though, Serena. So like, do you, I, do you just dream it? Do, do you just dream it and it's there in your account? I just dream it and it appears. <laughs> <laughs> no, I knew I, it. I knew it. <laughs> I think that anybody, anybody can do it. If you have a goal and if you set your mind to it, it's all about money management. I mean, you have to save your money. You have to work towards a goal and anything you believe can be possible. So it's not, you were determined, right? You were determined from yeah, such a young age to do it's, this. It's all about determination and that's yeah. how you achieve things in life. You know, whatever you want to achieve, if you stick to it, you plan it out, you have a goal and you work yourself up to it, you can do it. It doesn't matter what it is. And Serena, what does your family and friends think about all of this? Because I wonder, um, you know, you you did say at the start they're supportive, but as as an 18 year old going to your mom and dad saying, you know, I want to get this stuff done. Were they apprehensive? Were they trying to put you off of it? Or were they always very supportive? Well, I think that the people closest to you are pretty much always going to tell you, you don't need to get anything done. If someone is telling you, you do need to get anything done, then most likely they're not your friend. (laughs) Um, Mm. Because any of my friends who say, oh, I want to get this done, I say, you don't need it. But if it's something that you want to do, and it's something that will bring you confidence and make you happy, then go for it. And I think that's how people are. Obviously, you know, they're concerned, but when you explain yourself to someone and they understand why you want to do something and how it's going to make you feel better about yourself, then why would they want to stop you? 
Fair point, um, fair point. Yeah, this is it. I mean, Serena, you sound like such a uh, confident and driven and s- so self-sure of yourself. I want to I want to know what what are your fears or, or do you have any fears or insecurities or anything like that? No, I don't have any <laughs> I knew it. <laughs> I knew I had, that would be I, the answer. I had to stop for a second and think about it, but really I couldn't come up with anything. <laughs> There's nothing that you say, oh, damn it, I hope that doesn't happen or um, anything like, no worries. No, I think everything, everything happens for a reason. That's how I like to think. I like to think of that as well. But I I also think, you know, I'm not going through surgery where you could possibly pass away on the table. But you don't you don't think about that side of things at all. You just go into it. It's rare. I mean, maybe if you had some sort of pre-existing condition or. You know, it's not often that you're just going to die, especially if you're taking the precautions and you're going to the right places. Mm. You know, these procedures are very safe. They're performed every day. You know, the doctors obviously assess if you're a healthy candidate. You know, they want to know, do you have any heart conditions or anything? Obviously, at 23, I do not. But like I said earlier, there always is that little anxiety and that little worry, but I don't know. It is what it is. <laughs> yeah. You and deal with it, it all right. Yeah. So you just accept the risks. That's how it is in life. You know, every day when you get in your car and decide to drive down the highway, you accept the risk that maybe someone's going to smash into you. Most likely they won't, but it could happen. It's not going <laughs> to stop you from being fabulous, right? Nothing will ever stop me from being <laughs> fabulous, honey. <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> Serena, has anything ever gone wrong? Um, There's always these, you know, great stories of plastic surgery and these procedures, but, you know, there is another side to it as well. Um, But for you, have you ever experienced anything where you're like, oh, that that wasn't quite what I I wanted? No, I've always been satisfied and I've always been happy. I think the reason why is because whenever I go into something... I always make sure I set really realistic expectations for myself. You know, I figure out exactly what I'm going to get and how the result of something is going to be. So going into it, I know what's going to happen. So I don't get upset and I don't, you know, I don't think I'm going to get something that I'm not going to get because surgery can only give you so much, you know? Hmm. I think that's Uh, important in all this, just having a bit of realistic expectations because I think... Oh, 100%. If I hand it in a picture and I say, I want to look like Beyonce, I better come out looking like Beyonce, you know? (laughs) (laughs) A lot of people ask me, you know, what is my inspiration or is there someone I want to look like? And what I always say is, I just want to be the best version of myself because that's all you can be. You can't ever be anyone else except yourself. Serena, do you would you say you have an addiction to this? And do you ever see yourself stopping? Will you ever stop? Why would I ever stop? <laughs> no, <laughs> I think I think I'm always gonna be doing something to elevate myself and feel good, you know? Mm-hmm. Why would why would I stop? What's the point? <laughs> if you're happy. We exactly. only have one life and we only have one life and I wanna have fun. I want to enjoy it. Yeah. I like that so much. I love your attitude and your positive value. Yeah. You and- definitely don't need well, any surgery you. on your personality oh. because it is perfect <laughs> the way it is. Perfect. Well, thank you, honey. You're very welcome. <laughs> okay. And Serena, what does the future look like then? Because um, uh, I know now you said you're going and you're getting the BBL and the lipo and you told us all about that. Um but say, you know, down the line, what else? So you're just going to keep maintaining um, and that that's pretty much it? Yeah, I mean, I'm. it's just going to be, honestly, I don't know. I can't really say for sure because I never know how I feel. But in the near future, you know, recovery does take a long time. So I'm going to definitely kind of slow it down and take a break. Um, you know, I've been hard at work. I'm doing a new album right now. So I'm just focusing on that after my recovery. I'm not doing any more surgeries and I'm just going to be in the studio writing music and recording. Nice. And if people want to uh, explore more about you and your life and and what's going on, where can they go? Oh, of course I have Instagram. (laughs) My Instagram, my Instagram is the Serena Smith. 
T-H-E-S-E-R-E-N-A, S-M-I-T-H. You can find me on there. My music is on Apple Music, Spotify, anywhere where you can hear music. Under Serena Smith. Brilliant stuff. Yes. Uh, and I'm actually going to be on the E! reality TV show Botch next week, if anyone is a fan of that. Yes. No way! I watch that regularly, Serena. <laughs> okay. Yes. Uh, February February 1st. What we'll can you tell us any of the things that you're going to get fixed? <laughs> Obviously not. Honey, you'll just have to wait and see. You. There you course, go. There you go. Keep us waiting, Serena. <laughs> I love to keep them wanting more. Exactly. <laughs> Serena, it was a pleasure chatting to you. Thank you so much. And all the best going forward. We look forward to hearing the new music and seeing uh, the BBL. <laughs> I can't wait either. Wish yeah. me luck. Wish yeah. me luck. Best of luck. Great chatting to you. And uh, great to to just be around your, your positive energy. It was fantastic. Well, thank you so much. Bye-bye. Bye. Have a fabulous day. You too, Serena. It was an absolute pleasure. Thank you so much. And we'll chat to you again soon, okay? Thanks.